everyone uh, so welcome to the jnu ee preparation classes organized by the democratic students federation dsf so my name is anaga and as you all must be aware this session this session has been specifically organized for students who would be appearing for ma in economics both in citd and csp centers of the university so to start with Uh, from the dsf we have started this initiative to reach out and to help maximum people who would be appearing for uh, jnu ee 2021 which is scheduled to be held in september and to help in whatever ways we could in their academic pursuit so as we know how in the past one and a half year with the shutdown of universities and the lockdowns and the pandemic the education of students have been highly hit and we are facing a lot of difficulties as well so from the dsf we are trying to reach out to as much as people as possible and help in whatever ways we could in their preparation for the jnu entrance examination we'll also try our maximum to ensure that whatever materials or whatever classes that we are having is also accessible to everybody so i hope um, you all will be able to gain something from these sessions so so to move on to our today's session we have with us uh, alyasa and brithi both alyasa and brithi are doing their ma in economics from jnu and they both are in their first year so i think they'll be able to better guide you in your preparation for jnu e so over to them now first first thing is that most of you guys must have uh, filled in the form for both cesp and citd now with this prepare, this meeting we are going to address both the both the exams but uh, i would be addressing specifically cesp and alisa would be addressing for citd so just to clarify on some basic differences which these two courses are offering cesp you are going to have that it is more of a theoretical thing and citd is specialized in world economy and it's like more of international trade and it's a much mathematical course than what csp itself offers so that is like the basic difference but yes when you enter one of these you can opt for courses from the other one that that option is there so that is like the basic difference aryasa would you like to speak anything on this uh yes i think that's uh, more that's very clear on the pattern of the course i think we should uh, then proceed to the paper pattern if you have prepared uh, something on that otherwise uh, should i continue with the citd paper pattern or would you like to uh, clear for the csp first okay so let's start with csp because most of it is more or less many things are common to both the papers and citd has got some specific things in a much deeper fashion which ci csp isn't for csp which you don't require so let's begin with csp now you guys must have seen the prospectus of uh, which was released by the university and they are like if you broadly broadly specify there are like various sections you have got micro macro trade math stats and a portion on development and indian economics development economics and indian economic history and this uh, portion sometimes also asks you questions from general knowledge where it uh, it appears sometimes but it's not like every year they ask now to how to go about with this so uh, basically i have prepared a list of the topics and the references which you might require or basically which the references which i referred to during my preparation so this list would be circulated and if you guys have any question so you might ask after me and adhyasa have concluded what we have to see so if you come to the micro portion the first thing which is required is demand and price and income elasticity so the basic concepts to start with you get it from mancus that 10 principles of economics the very first book with which you began your undergrad that and then you move on to varian varian offers you much details and varian is a proper book mancus is more like a story which is going to explain the background story behind stuffs 
then you have production and cost you can refer to either ferguson and gold if that book isn't available that's not a necessity go for pindike rubinfeld or any other standard textbook most of these concepts are usually covered then there is the whole market structure starting from perfect competition monopoly oligopoly monopolistic competition remember here in oligopoly cover the swizzy cover that king to demand curve which is there which is um, i don't know across universities perhaps it's not taught in our university it was not taught so do cover that portion this is also to be covered from pindike and rubelfeld and theory of distribution where you have got the factor price market that you can cover from pindike or fajusan and gold so basically for micro it's pindike and fajusan and gold for macro jnu often ask questions from the national income national income if you must most of you must have gone through the past year papers national income is a portion which they stress upon so national income you can get the concepts from any class 12 book if you are from the icse board then you can go for that uh, franks book or your 12 ncrt you get the concepts there you can also refer to mancu's book for concepts Mac mancu macroeconomics and then solve the questions which are there in the past 10 years of jnu paper now these are quite elaborate something you need to remember is that you won't be provided a calculator during the entrance exam so this is a calculation which you might would have to do and that's a bit difficult i, I won't say difficult that's something you will have to do practice 20 days are there it's long enough for bank uh, balance of payments you can refer to showman shikdar and see the whole of uh, macroeconomics which we are taught uh, like islm then the fiscal policy adas this uh, then rational uh, ratex these things you can refer th from mancu mancu is more or less exhaustive then coming to trade trade the trade is much of much more of a focus for citd portion alia sir would elaborate on it but i am going to give you the basics of it so first thing you start with trade yes first thing is that competitive advantage i i remember seeing the papers like there were questions on which country has a competitive advantage in which good or which country would export if we follow the uh, law of competitive advantage for competitive advantage you can refer to mancu that was chapter 3 or something like that in the 10 principles after that you come to the ricardian framework ricardo's uh, theory is entirely well drafted in krugman's book then the krugman covers many topics like ricardo standard trade model the trade policy is also there for the ho model it would be better if you would refer to dominic salvat dominic salvatore and uh, in the ho theory there are models like stolper samuelson and ribzinski right for this i have got some notes prepared if you guys need it i would send it in this whatsapp group for the statistics portion remember that in csp maths and stats it's not so much an issue like it's something which you can easily cover just all you need is a bit of practice so what i did was refer to my giri banerji there was one green colored book from my undergrad days and uh, class 12s book so that more or less covers something which is used is uh, which is asked often in jnu is like what are the fun uh, given a function is this continuous where is the maximizing point and this for optimization problems always remember to check the second order condition like they are going to give you you are going to find first order condition then don't solve it because don't put that answer because there would be an option often it is the case that there is an option which eliminates the that option through the second order condition so checking the second order condition is something which you must remember and here every question matters since this is an entrance exam so yeah drafting the graphs of the functions this is something which is required like uh, then the questions are uh, like uh, what is the area of the curves sometimes these type of questions come so that is well covered in any class 12 book and if you want to look at it sitter and hammer optimization chapter you can refer to that now coming to the development portion development most of you might have papers in your university exams which uh, cover this development portion so in that case refer to those papers 
refer to the references in those papers and usually questions come from that some books i might refer to you is ap third world that book and todaro and smith so these are like uh, can be used interchangeably i remember using third world but that's not a compulsion you can use either of them okay and one thing which is often done is that for questions like uh, these like on indian economic history or on general knowledge if you go through the papers what you will find is that they are repetitive often it's the case so solve the papers that would serve the purpose focus on concepts like hdi then who created the hdi then poverty line gini coefficient these things are often asked and if you this gk often seems a challenging portion for jnu csp entrance so do one thing like make a copy and sit with 30 minutes for this gk portion every day and you google stuffs and add those things if you like make a copy for say 10 to 15 days and browse through them it would be done gk would gk is something which you can take care of public finance also there are questions now in uh, these questions also there i remembered in my entrance it came a question which was repeated in many years this often happens that public finance also questions are repeated so that is roughly it and solve the last past year papers that is very much important so aliasa would you like to take over so yes so brithi explained quite a few things about the csp uh, paper and uh, one thing somebody asked about the difference between csp and citd so these are centers in jnu csp is the center for economic studies in and planning and citd is the center for international trade and development right and citd is part of school of international studies sis and uh, csp is part of sss school of social sciences so uh, in the uh, websites for past year papers or coaching centers you generally hear the terms sss and sis so these are the two different things and uh, yeah so i gave both of the exams so i'm actually both of us are csp students but i gave both the exams so i'll i'm uh, you know qualified enough to talk about citd paper as well so what citd has i think citd has also some uh, stricter eligibility criteria you need to have taken courses in micro macro and maths in undergrad there's something uh, Uh, some more uh, eligibility criteria than CSP. In CSP, we have students who have never done math. Uh, they are also here, so yeah, that's good thing. Now, coming to the paper, I think uh, just to gauge the uh, preparation of the group, uh, I think you've had some uh, exams already. Uh, if I'm not wrong, can you just can any one of you just write in the chat or just unmute themselves and tell me? I think IGIDR, IIT Delhi, and others have already happened, right? At South Asian University, etc. So, yes, Misa. I think somebody raised their hand. South Asian University has happened. Okay, so you are in the midst of giving the exams and you are in that zone, right? Yes, Shobha, please go on. Okay, South Indian University happened, IJIDR happened, ISI happened, and I guess Tari, uh, Gokule, Ashoka, many of the exams happened, and Hyderabad okay, is tomorrow great. happening. Okay, well, Hyderabad is tomorrow. Okay, then that's great. So, uh, so you must be like in the midst of practicing right now. Okay, so I'm going to focus. Like there are twenty days. What do you need to do for JNU, CITD, and CSP? Bhrithi has covered, but what do you need for a general? uh you know jnu paper so jnu paper as you might have seen ift2 has happened okay ift if it is happened it is very useful for citd uh, or sis so uh, jnu paper you might have seen that through the years the pattern has been changing right there previously there used to be some descriptive questions as well and since 2019 nta has taken over and the paper pattern has completely changed one caveat though uh, do not refer to the 2019 CITD paper as uh, uh, or or CESP paper as a reference because that was a very haphazard uh, year for entrances. They just gave forty questions. A lot of those questions were wrong, uh, and you know the standard is fifty questions, but they gave forty questions for CITD. So uh, just solve it. It's good for practice, but do not just get very bothered by it. Ki, okay, these are very tough questions. So oh my God, so much GK is coming here. What will we do? Do not get bothered by it. That's not very. Uh, 
a very standard paper now uh, so generally jnu paper has 50 questions and you get ample time to solve 50 questions it will never be the case that you feel that okay i'm short on time how do i do that so it's important that you focus and utilize the extra time to be more precise because whether whether you give CSP or CITD paper, the paper will be from easy to uh, mildly difficult. But the key is that it will be easy for everybody. So you need to get as many questions right. Okay, I missed CITD by two correct questions. So that's that's the uh, you know level of precision that you require. Now you might be already practicing uh, some things in CITD the. Uh, syllabus is very specific micro macro stats and mathematics are very standard uh, these are the four subjects which are asked in every entrance exam of every university okay so the for these subjects uh Brithi mentioned some very good references but if you have not heard of these references i suggest that do not get uh you know worried just go with what you have been preparing with that is okay now is not the time to start a big new topic for example, now is not the time to start with statistics, you know, from the beginning or something. Uh, it's o it only pays off to clear sub conceptual doubts for which we are here and which for which we will take sessions as well. But the most important thing to do in these 20 days is just to practice the past year papers and get in the zone of solving questions. Conceptual clarity and you know clarity in theory goes a long way in your master's course, but does not matter very much for entrances. For entrances, they just require you to solve questions. And especially since now it is only MCQ and no descriptive questions, it's very mechanical. So uh, micro macro stats and maths are very standard. In in uh, CITD, as Brittany mentioned, there is more content of mathematical questions, but the difficulty level is not very hard. Okay, so you will get by if you know 11th, 12th mathematics uh, from CBSC, ISC, ICSC or any state board, whichever you, uh, whichever, you know, stream you took. Uh, if you are thorough with it, you'll get by. Some uh, multivariable calculus gets asked sometimes, but it's very rare. So do not worry about, uh, you know, the difficulty of math content in the exam. Just focus on what you have. And uh, micro macro stats is uh, again uh, we'll take some sessions on stats if you wish, but uh, uh, and I'll elab I'll elaborate uh, on topics if and as you need. I'll not go on uh, without any you know uh, motive. So for practicing uh, JNU exams, it helps if you have solved all the past years. Now, if you need additional practice, of course you need to solve past years, and I'll suggest some. Uh, if you don't already have some links for the answer sheets or answer keys and uh, all on the WhatsApp group. Now, uh, for additional practice, you can, for CITD especially, for additional practice, you can refer to IIFT past years because that is also a course which has world economy and international trade in its content. So there are similarities in, in question styles. Also, if you want to practice uh, mathematics questions, you can go for uh, ISI paper one. Now, paper one used to be uh, all mathematics questions, and those were 12th standard Takki math. Okay, so you can go for ISI past year papers and go for IGIDR uh, past years. Uh, IGIDR only has a mock paper available on their website. So, uh, can you recommend reference for series? Uh, 11th, class 11th book, NCRT, RD Sharma, RS Agarwal, any ICSC book, sequences and series, just practice from any class 11th book. Uh, yeah, and so. In CITD, there is also uh, a great emphasis on development economics and international trade. So these two things are the specialized topics. For international trade, I'll send, uh, uh, if you are very uninitiated, if you have studied it in undergrad, it's pretty standard. It's not a very difficult uh, you know, set of questions. But if you have never studied international trade, I'll send you some video lectures based on the references which Brithi uh, mentioned, Krugman and Salvatore. Uh, watch those lectures at 1.75x speed or 2x speed, and if you uh, and if there are further questions, we'll resolve them. Uh, for South, uh, for, for yeah, for development economics, you can also practice South Asian universities past year papers. They have development economics content, and uh, uh, yeah, development economics they mostly ask uh, risk aversion, land uh, uh, land ownership and land cropping patterns questions, and questions on poverty, human development index. Uh, inequality measurement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These uh, kind or demographics sometimes they ask. So these are the kind of questions they ask. Uh, now, uh, 
so yeah south asian university past year papers are a very good source to practice for it and also for macro questions south asian university past year papers are also a very good source for additional practice so this was about citd it's uh, again you'll find it uh, easy to solve because you are in the zone of solving question papers and attending exam uh but if there are any specific questions at this point or any topics which we want us to cover yeah for uh, for past year questions and solutions you can just post them on the whatsapp group and somebody will respond so that is not the biggest issue if you need a certain conceptual clarity on something we can take uh, sessions on it uh, as and you know when required during these 20 years so yes hcumc msc paper will help for csps which should be given higher preference sis or sss in examination form that is very subjective that depends on you both are you know courses of jnu or all they differ in is the course content citd ma economics is more focused on the international economics and cesp has also content in international economics but it is uh, you know more general dsc and jnu courses are more general uh, jnu csp are very general courses they uh, you you can mold them according to your requirement citd is a more specific case so but in terms of uh, you know immediate employment opportunities they don't uh, make much difference they make difference when you want to go for research in a specific field so it helps if you have a specialized degree and so on that's just it otherwise it's subjective choose whichever you like yeah any, yeah any i would question? like to add on to this like i don't have this idea that the placement cells work differently it's the same for cesp and citd both so whichever company comes for cesp people sit from both the uh, both the centers okay and uh, this is right as alias said this is very much subjective depends on the kind of economics you want to engage with citd will offer you the kind of economics which you have studied till date a much more deeper and a better idea of this csp well you would get to know of world of economics that you haven't studied till yet it's more like unlearning and learning new things for csp So yeah, any correct. other questions? Just yeah, unmute think, uh, yourselves and huh, ask. People have raised their hands. I think yeah, you can just unmute yourself. But for now, yes, uh, Shruti, go ahead and please show up after that. Uh, hi. Actually, I wanted to ask that can you provide us with past year solutions? Uh, we don't have detailed solutions. We can you can just send the questions on the WhatsApp group and which you where you are uh, uncomfortable and we can solve them. And that's been happening since last day, right? So, but detailed solution sets nobody has, not even coaching centers. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and to be honest, it would help you more if you try to solve it first, and then if you face a problem, just drop it. Everyone is there. Your peers are there. It would be a great peer learning experience as well. You all can solve within yourselves, and whatever remains unresolved, we are there for that. Yeah, and just uh, even if you feel your doubt is stupid, please just send on the group because it really helps. And uh, also because some past year questions have been wrong, especially since NTA took over, there are many wrong questions in the. They, so they are they release the answer key and then we send the email back. Yeah, to all that. But they just they cancel the question and they award everybody the marks. So that has been happening uh, in the JNU previous year. So just ask the questions. Maybe it's a wrong question. Yeah. Any and sources? And there answer? is uh, one. Yes, there are. Yes, uh, some sources are there for answer keys. Uh, at least till 2012, 2013, you'll get answer keys online. For after that, there's no one reliable source. But I'll try to collect some things and uh, send across. Or if even if there are no answer keys. Because JNU doesn't release answer keys uh, before 2018, then we you can just confirm the answer with us. That's it. Ah, uh, econometrics. Okay, econometrics. Don't get scared. Anywhere where econometrics is asked, whether it is DSC, ISI, IGIDR, JNU, MSC, anywhere in India, there's no. Uh, hardwired numericals asked from econometrics only very conceptual questions 
even if they asked heteroscedasticity and uh, you know multicollinearity any any uh, of these topics they'll just ask definitional questions from regression also they can go uh, a little deeper but in econometrics they ask very uh, specific conceptual questions so it's not going to be very difficult if you know hypothesis testing if you are aware of sampling etc etc the state the uh, standard statistics material then you'll able you'll be able to answer econometrics with basic uh, definitional knowledge so if you want we can take a session on some things but uh, you'll have to inform us at least one day prior okay so there was this question about the gk and stuff so right so what i would suggest is go through the past year papers look at the type of questions which are asked i remember in 2006 or 2001 perhaps they asked like who won the nobel prize and what was their theory so if that like i'm just telling you if that is the question do one thing prepare a list of who all won the nobel prizes and what were their theories in which year this type of questions often come and like poverty line growth these type of questions which you can refer to any standard book or even if it's not available with you or you don't have the time look up for youtube videos or just google up things and spend 30 minutes a day on it it would be done uh, yes shruti i think shobha had also raised i am if shobha if you still have the okay. question and then shruti can go ahead first actually when i was solving past year papers i found that like the paper of 2019 and 20 was entirely different from the past year format so like past year there was like a bit much of statistics etc but for 2019 it was more like dead weight loss bombarded there were so many questions from dead weight loss and i was like is dead weight loss a great important aspect of cesp and in 2020 the paper was quite spaced but many questions were wrong so which pattern to follow exactly uh 2019 definitely don't go for it because uh, what they did was uh, in a ha- hurry they uh, you know it was a very half hazard process they just transferred it to nta and nta prepared the paper so uh, they just copy pasted a lot of questions from past years and they copy pasted a lot of gk questions so you will notice in 2019 the gk quotient especially in 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 cesp is very high okay and dead weight dead weight loss again <laughs> there is a lot of weight for dead weight loss in 2000 mm so again don't go by it 2020 you can you know have some credibility because it's, it was the second year of nta again there were a lot of past year questions but uh, and and of course wrong questions but then uh you we have to follow the 50 question wala pattern because that is consistent now since the nta has taken over uh about the wrong questions well nobody can you know the uh, the professors i don't believe prepare the paper it's a standardized paper prepared by the body or something so for the wrong questions and how many wrong questions would be there we can't say but rest assured that whatever wrong questions will be there will be corrected later because the students email them we uh, the existing students email them aspirants email them so they are corrected uh, does that answer your question shobha okay thank uh, you yeah shruti please go ahead uh, i read in the prospectus that there are 100 questions this time uh there are 100 questions for 100 questions for sss as well as sis okay let me check i'm not sure if that is correct in the prospectus it was written that there are 100 questions and there will be no negative marking so yeah, negative marking is never there okay so uh, the type of questions will change or not or, and also the uh, broadness of the topics will increase or not or it will remain the same no see uh, the types of questions and the broadness of topic will not change cesp mein there uh, is uh, more broadness because csp syllabus is very general you yes, can yes. you can get anything on the face of the earth related to economics on it C- uh, citd will have more questions uh, 
if, if there are 100 questions, it will just have more questions, but we'll stick to the syllabus. It's very okay. focused. Okay, thank you. So are there any other questions? If not, then I would address some questions which are there in the chat box. Sir, how will I cover the probability portion in stats? Refer to your class 12 book as the first thing. And then you can take up any other book like Giddy Energy or some other substitutes which or any other stand, which, whichever your university teaches, any other any other book would do the serve. But class 12 book serves 90% of it, if not 100. So if you any of you want specific sessions on anything, do let us know in the chat box or in the uh, group so that they could also they can also prepare beforehand. So if you want a specific uh, uh, session on Indian pol uh, political economy or anything, whatever it is, uh, statistics or anything, uh, just let us know in the group so that or in the chat box here yeah, so that they can also prepare beforehand. And one more thing is that there was a question about GK in the chat box. See, don't worry so much about it. If there are many questions, then the cutoff would be low. That is the general case. So ah, there would G be yes. like, yeah, two to three questions which yeah. nobody will answer. And this is a competitive exam. So that won't be so much of an issue. Yes, GK questions come at the margin. They do not, uh, except for 2019 paper, they do not form the majority of the paper. So, yes, and there's no way to just guess which topic will be picked up by the exam, you know, board. So just trust yourself and your past knowledge and uh, they come at the margin. They'll not make such a big impact on your overall result. And really one more general suggestion, like what happened with us in 2020 is that we had a few long questions. And most of us had spent a lot of time solving those questions many a times. So if you try two to three times and the question doesn't get solved, just have this confidence to leave it as a long question. Because otherwise what happens, you spend 20 minutes in a question and then you come out of the examination hall and realize that that is a wrong question. Well, then that becomes a very tiresome situation so yes questions can be wrong and accept that and do not spend so much time in a question i just saw that number of questions was like you know 100 and Nietzsche star mein likha hua tha, may vary in certain subject depending on the nature of the subject. So is there any way someone can confirm that, you know, they'll give 100 question or 50 questions or 40? Like, does it vary year to year? Uh, it should be 50 for CSP and CITD, but I will confirm and just get back on WhatsApp group. Are you there uh, on the WhatsApp group? Yeah, Excuse yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Okay. Uh, but uh, this time it is the exam is of three hours. So uh, how can it be possible that there will be 50 questions and the paper will be of three hours? Because earlier Actually, I guess it was uh, of two I hours. Think, huh, no, no, it was three hours only, I think. Okay. But uh, even in the first time in 2019, uh, the exam happened. Uh, in certain centers, there were only 25 questions. Like for two, three months, each question had two uh, weightage of two marks or something like that, two or three marks. And that is how it was in 2019. And in 2020, many centers had 100 questions. So, I mean, prepare accordingly. I mean, most probably they'll have 50 or 100 questions only. 
last time in i remember in uh, cps political science they had 100 questions but before that they had for mphil phd they just had 25 questions so can you please confirm for this year the number of questions i think it would be around 100 only if it is given in the prospectus that it would be 100 questions it would be 100 only or Well, in, anyway, you will have enough time for the questions. I yes, guess. you'll have enough time, and I think uh, in some centers where it is only like GK paper, like CPS and international relations, while exams, they have general knowledge questions, right? So it does not take time to solve. They are not numerical based, so they have hundred questions. But since CSP and CITD uh, economic based, they have some numericals and some computation to do. They generally give fifty questions only. I'll confirm it, but I'm. Uh, Inclined towards fifty, and also you get you have we have gotten three hours throughout the time. No matter if there were forty questions or twenty-five, as Anaga said, we have always gotten three hours. So that's a standard thing. But yeah, we'll confirm the uh, number of questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi. Actually, I think uh, everybody in this uh, meet is preparing for this year uh, entrance exam of JNU. But I, I am preparing for next year's. I don't know I, how I get up here. Uh, so, uh, is there anything or uh, like I could benefit from or like I don't know? Uh, will you provide uh, session for next year's also? next year i uh, you could benefit from it if you have some comfortability with mathematics and you know topics already come because the the people preparing for this year have already gone through the preparation of the last year and you know they are in the zone of solving and appearing for other entrances exams for you it will be the beginning to prepare so it 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 works if you spend time with topics you know for example if you spend time with maths and micro and stats and ma macro so for you it's quite the opposite case you need to spend time with new topics for them new topics are disastrous at this is at this moment uh, but yeah for you it's a different case altogether uh, so uh, so i have a question in my mind so should i start looking for past year papers first and then uh, go through the concept according to them or should i first clear my concepts and go uh, then see the past year questions uh for general papers like jnu msc south asian university etc you can just look at past year questions and then prepare accordingly for very mathematical papers like dsc and isi you will find some questions that will be of with the level equivalent to a masters first year it will not be taught to you in bachelors so you could then just begin to hone mathematics and microeconomics and then simultaneously look at the question papers but yeah it always helps to have, gauge the question paper first and then start preparing ah uh, great thank you so much I think Shruti has asked for specific classes. Uh, also, Shruti, if you could specify the topics or general areas on which you would want to have the classes, then it would help them. Like the, the syllabus is vast, so they could also narrow down to which topics you want to discuss. Yes. The new things. Yes. Yes. For example, I have noted down consumer surplus and effect of tax, welfare, economics, taxation, subsidy. So just. narrow down your topics like these and uh, there is a lot of overlap between sss and sis exam in this case so uh, yeah so just do one thing the link for the whatsapp group has already been shared in this chat whoever is not there join the group and in the group specify the topics which you want classes on after that we are going to send a google form then according to the votes we are going to do the classes whichever has the higher vote Gets the first class. This way, we are going to proceed. Okay. Hi. I wanted to ask that um, should we solve all the twenty years papers or uh, solving ten to twelve years will suffice? Aim for as much as you can. Okay. Yeah. like i i just want to ask that the pattern is like the type of sums come in genu and the 
uh, GK. I, apart from GK, maths and stats, the level is just the same. So yeah. solving more and more same type of questions will be helpful or getting more knowledge, uh, like general knowledge, working on gen GK and Indian Eco will be more helpful. Uh, I think at this point, you know, since it is just 20 days remaining and GK and uh, Indian Eco and Economic History, these are vast topics. So you don't, you cannot make a guess that, okay, they'll ask a question from the 1700s or 1800s or this and that. So again, mm -hmm. it will be like starting a new topic. So it works if you hone your existing skills and uh, then just trust your past knowledge to work in the paper. So, yeah. So it'll be like more useful solving the past years, right? More and more yes. past years. Yes, more and more past years. Even if they look redundant and same type of questions, just do it because it helps you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, also, could you please explain the paper pattern of IGDR? Uh, IGDR, uh, did you? Uh, achha, you are now. Okay, you will appear next year. Okay. So IGIDR, I think, uh, can somebody confirm if this year they did 100 questions or just 35, 40 questions like they did last year? As far as, far hmm. as I remember, there were 35 questions. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, okay. So generally they have like uh, 100 questions if I'm not wrong. But since last two years, they are reducing the number of questions to 35. Uh, so y there is one section on reasoning. Uh, there is one section on English uh, comprehension, reading comprehension. Uh, there is one section on basic mathematics, which is class 12th stuff. But in IGIDR, they also ask you geometry questions. Geometry questions don't get asked anywhere else. In just IGID, they ask you about hyperbola, uh, parabola, etc., etc. So that's just it. It's very basic stuff. Uh, logarithms and exponentials, uh, you know, are asked in IGIDR. And uh, then there is an option to choose either undergraduate level macro or uh, uh, undergraduate level mathematics, advanced mathematics. So it, uh, eco students choose economics, and you just answer basic questions on micro, macro, and yeah. That's it. it's it's again very uh, medium level difficulty to easy paper so you need to score and there's negative marking also so there's cutoff and there's then then there's interview so you need to be precise and aim for the highest score because it is an easy paper again IG IDR. all right thank you so much hi i would just like to add that this time the eco portion of ig idr was not that easy i mean we didn't expect such difficult questions from economics part in IGIDR. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they made a change this year. Yeah. So, so okay, yeah. Uh, there are, no are there any more questions? I mean, it's already 50 minutes, I think. We can wind up the session if there yeah. aren't any more. Anything? I mean, if you both have anything to add. Sorry, I think I'll just, uh, uh, me and Brithi will discuss and take a session on consumer surplus tax and uh, subsidy questions. Uh, welfare economics is a little broader area, so we'll keep try to keep a separate session if that is needed. Although welfare economics is very little of, of that portion is asked. So yeah, I, I think in a day or two, we'll take a session on consumer surplus and tax.